Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome back to another Writing Wednesday. And today I want to talk about dialogue, that pesky dialogue and the proper formatting and punctuation and all those technical things that can be a bit confusing. So let's jump into it with some examples, how to write proper dialogue. First, let me say this video is brought to you by my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. I really appreciate the continued support you guys. You guys keep this channel going as we figure out this new YouTube algorithm. And if you're new here, my name is Chris, and I'm excited to announce that I have finished the first draft of my debut fantasy novel, The Crimson Gods. So I'll be moving into the editing phase very, very soon, like yesterday, because as you start getting into the editing phase, as far as the line editing, the copy editing in itself, and the proofreading, you're going to start seeing all these damn mistakes you've made. So let's jump into it. Number one, a proper dialogue example. Dialogue should always be used in quotation marks and all the punctuation should also be within those quotation marks. We're not talking about internal dialogue or thoughts here of the characters. That's a whole separate thing we'll get into in just a few minutes. So just for kind of a before and after as we go through the list here, here's a proper example of dialogue with a little bit of narration in between it from The Crimson Gods, Chapter 1. Please, Gorin, I am no lady, she said teasingly with the hint of a smile. The guard's face turned turnip red. How fares your mother, she asked. So as you can see here during the sentence, you have, please, Gorin, I am no lady, in quotes. You have a comma that's still in the quotes as well, and she said teasingly with the hint of a smile is the dialogue tag with a bit of action as well. As you can see, the word she is not capitalized because that's part of the same sentence. Then you have the guard's face turned turnip red, a little bit of narration between dialogue, then the final dialogue at the end, how fares your mother with a question mark, the same thing applies. The word she after that is not capitalized because it's part of the same sentence. And number two, use dialogue tags. Now again, as I said in tip one, dialogue tags are part of the sentence, but use them, otherwise people are just going to be confused. So of course, dialogue tags are these common tags that indicate when a character is actually speaking. For example, he said, she said, she muttered, he whispered, etc. So here's an example from the Crimson Gods prologue, both an incorrect and a correct example of using dialogue tags. You're welcome to share my fire, Ivan, offered Merrick. As you can see here, the first version is incorrect because the word offered is capitalized and again the dialogue tag offered Merrick is part of the same sentence so going off that the second version is in fact the correct version you're welcome to share my fire Ivan offered Merrick as you can see here the word offered is not capitalized because it is part of the same sentence so what if somebody's asking a question or exclaiming something and using an exclamation point they're yelling or whatever the same thing applies so for an example if I were to structure this a little bit differently and had him asking a question would you like to share my fire Ivan offered Merrick the question mark here is still inside of the quotation marks, and Alfred Merrick is still part of the same sentence, so the word Alfred is not capitalized. But if there is some sort of action before the dialogue, that is a separate sentence that is not a dialogue tag. So for an example from the Crimson Gods, both an incorrect and a correct version, Ash cut him off. We can speak at another time, perhaps tonight. So as you can see here, the first version of this is incorrect, Ash cut him off. Then we have a comma. That is wrong because that is a separate sentence. The correct version displays this because it is a separate sentence. Ash cut him off. We can speak another time, perhaps tonight. So you can see there's a period after Ash cut him off because this is not a dialogue tag. I think this can get confusing for people uh, in a lot of cases because you think this little thing before the dialogue is a tag when in fact it's not. And number three, as I mentioned in number one, internal dialogue, otherwise known as thoughts. Quotation marks, as I said in the beginning, should be used for actual dialogue, things said out loud by the characters, not thoughts in their head, otherwise known as internal dialogue. Now, I personally decided to use italics to represent the character's internal thoughts or internal dialogue because I think it helps differentiate between what's going on in the character's head and what's going on in the scene. Now, some people choose not to use italics at all, and that's fine too. It's nothing wrong with that per se, but I just think with all the words on a page, the formatting is really important to help guide the reader along. I think italics helps do that. So for an example from the Crimson God's prologue, the last proper end he had left four or five days before had been in the easternmost kingdom of Athoria, along with his last decent meal and feather bed. The barn and Thorell did not count, he thought. So as you see there, I have this little bit of narration. At the end, he actually thinks that barn didn't count back there. It was a shithole. But I actually did use a dialogue tag here as well, and you don't have to do that in all cases either. So here's another example without a dialogue tag. He then glanced a broken sapling laid over a wall with black sap oozing from the break like a festering wound. That would be a good place to lay a saddle and let it air out. The riding had been long and they both needed a proper bath. So as you can see here, there's some narration. Then he has this internal thought because right now there's no one else with him in this scene for him to speak to. So I think the italics helps it stand out and let the reader know this is what he's thinking. 
And number four, every time a new person speaks, it's a new paragraph, even if it's one word. This is pretty self-explanatory, just basically hit enter every time somebody new starts speaking, but it can get a little bit tricky depending on the actions of that person as well and the narration in between it. So here's an example from the Crimson Gods, chapter one. Ash, a voice called through the surrounding song of commerce. She turned to see Mitch, her brother's retainer. Slow down, where are you going, he asked. She rolled her eyes and put on a smile. That's none of your concern. Why do you care, she said teasingly. At least let me walk with you, he replied. So you can see there, Mitch is speaking in the first paragraph, then we jump down to another when Ashea starts speaking, and then right back to him when he replies. And number five, every paragraph is indented, except for two cases, after a chapter heading or after a scene break. So I'll throw chapter one as an example here up on the screen here. You can see chapter one, Ashea, and then the first paragraph is not indented, but the rest of them are after that. Now, some of you may be asking what a scene break is. A scene break is simply a place where you're writing in the same chapter, but you decide to switch scenes. So it's typically a little mark of some sort, whether it's three pound signs or three asterisks or some kind of little symbol that the author uses to indicate the passes of time or a completely different scene within the same chapter. Now, for me personally, every time I change scenes, I just go ahead and change chapters so I don't use chapter breaks. But if I chose to use scene breaks in this novel, it would be the same thing after those little three asterisks or pound signs or whatever it may be, the first chapter of that would not be indented and the rest of them would be. So for an example, I'll just throw up some dialogue here from chapter one. If I decided to use a scene break, let's say the scene break was right before this dialogue starts, the first one would not be indented and the rest would be. And bonus number six, do I use an ellipses or an M dash? This can be kind of tricky and it kind of messed with me for a little while when I was first writing my first paragraph probably two years ago. But since then I've learned a little bit and I'm going to help make my editor's life a little bit easier. So basically you want to use ellipses when the character is speaking and then they kind of just run out of words or there's something unsaid or their thoughts just trail off or whatever, use ellipses in those cases. But if a character is interrupted by another character in their dialogue or something happening, then use the M dash. And of course, another example from the Crimson Gods. Yes, my lord, as I said, I, please call me Merrick. No need for such formality here. So as you can see there, this kid is speaking. He clearly gets cut off by Merrick. So we use the M dash in that case. And for another example, using both from chapter 13 of the Crimson Gods, Sirik rapped on the door. My lady, may I, who are you? I've said all I know. A voice came from behind the door. The council of Begamar sent me to find justice for your village, for the tragedy, Amori heard the footsteps as Sirix spoke. The door swung open. So in that example, obviously Sirix talking. He gets cut off by this lady inside this house. And then he's talking about this tragedy. So his voice kind of trails off or the words are not there or whatever. But he's not interrupted by anything. So therefore I use ellipses in that example. And pro tip, or maybe amateur tip, depending on whether you're talking about my IT side or my author side, use control alt and the minus sign on your numbers keypad, and that will give you the proper M dash. And if you have any specific writing videos you would like to request, feel free to do that, or consider joining our Patreon community, and you can leave suggestions there as well, so I can do particular writing videos on what people are having trouble with. So you can click right over here for more writing advice videos, or you can click right over here for the Mandalorian season two breakdowns. Remember, on this channel, we do break down actual stories on TV. And if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and a share. And of course, be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.